Slits, the beer that made Milwaukee famous, presents The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good evening, this is Ronald Coleman. Benita Coleman. Inviting you to join us again on the campus of Ivy College as the guests of our sponsors, the brewers of Schlitz Beer. The taste of Schlitz. The taste so many people prefer has made Schlitz Beer first in sales in the USA. If you like good beer, do as millions of people are doing all over the nation. Ask for Schlitz the most popular beer in history. And now, the Halls of Ivy. Welcome again to Ivy. Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. It's the postprandial period at number one faculty row. Postprandial being a euphemism for, uh, oh, let's let the dinner dishes go for a while. And Dr. William Todd Underhall, Ivy's president, sinks happily into his big leather chair for a little after-dinner conversation with his wife, Victoria, who is almost too beautiful to be as intelligent as she is. As Dr. Hall says... Ah, that was a splendid dinner, Vicky, and you should... Why are you gazing at me with that air of concern? I had an easy day, and except for some slight difficulty in keeping my eyes open, my health is excellent. Hmm. Then why didn't you sleep well last night? Well, to use the Yankee technique of answering a question with a question, how did you know I didn't sleep well? No, I had you get up and look at the clock two, three times, and toss around some more, and then go to the kitchen for something. Milk. Hmm. I, I'm sorry if I disturbed you, darling. Why didn't you let me know you were awake? A glass of milk is a pallid substitute for your stimulating conversation. <laughs> Thank you. But I was afraid I'd wake you even up. Uh, even up? <laughs> Waking you more up. <laughs> oh. Incidentally, now, what is that about a glass of milk that is the first thing you think of when you can't sleep? Oh, that's an interesting thought. Mm. I suppose it's a subconscious effort to achieve the calm, imperturbable placidity of the cow. (laughs) You know, it's a belief held by almost all primitive races that we partake of the qualities of the things we eat. A pot roast of puma for courage. Monkey stew for agility. (laughs) Rib of rhinoceros for strength, and so on. (laughs) Um, so I, I presume it's the nudge of racial memory which sends us seeking tranquility in the juice of the jersey. Uh, it, it is possible that, um, <laughs> that we, uh, uh, what is it, Vicky? Yeah, I thought I heard a siren. Oh, but this being hell week on the campus, the sounds of sirens, shots, and the low moans of fraternity pledges are to be expected. Yes, <laughs> then what did keep you awake last night? I really don't know. I might have been restless because my blankets kept slipping off. Or my blankets may have kept slipping off because I was restless. However, it just might have been that lamb curry we had at Professor Quincannon's. Mm, Did you try counting sheep? Uh, No, dear. After so much curried lamb, the idea was (laughs) untouched. No, I I finally got to sleep with the Indians. Well, Indians as in Bombay or Indians as in Wyoming? Um, no, they're the American Indians, dear. I, um, <laughs> uh, I found myself trying to think of Indian tribes alphabetically. Apaches, Arapahoes, Algonquins, Blackfeet, Beavers, Bannocks, Chippewas, Crows, Cherokees, Delawares, Dakotas, Eskimos, Labrador, Eskimos, Mackenzie, Eskimos, Greenland, Flathead... No, 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 I think you cheated uh, using three kinds of Eskimos. Oh, no, 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 dear. They are as distinct from one another as the Wyandots and the Shawnees. Oh. However... A question. Uh, yes? How did you come out with T-U-V-W-X-Y and Z? Tukukamkaris, Umatillas, Varmins, Winnebagos, Yakimos, and Zunis. <laughs> it's fantastic. But at the same time, I'm a little bit suspicious about the Varmins. 
Well, that, that's ethnological license. Hmm? Generic term used by fur trappers. Oh, well, you left out X. Uh, ah, yes, yes, the X. Hmm. That, uh, that's the one that kept me tossing till the break of dawn. <laughs> And the answer was so obvious that I, um... Oh, what varmint could that be coming to our little wigwam at this time of the night? Big chief, no shut eye. <laughs> Me, go look. <laughs> oh, hello, Dr. Hall. Ah, Chief Bentley. Sorry to bother you so late, but can I have a minute? Uh, sure, come in. Victoria, you've met Mr. Bentley. I am his chief of police. Yes, good evening, Miss Hall. Hello there. Sit down, Chief. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, I can't stay long. I've got to go back to the city hall and pretend I'm not cheating the taxpayers. <laughs> they expect me to put in a 14-hour day, and I prefer a 6-hour day, so I compromise on 10. <laughs> With two hours for lunch and a nap in the office, I come out all right. <laughs> Doc, I've got a problem. Well, good for you. This is the first time he's opened his eyes wide all evening. <laughs> well, one of your students is in the hospital, Doc. Oh? Fraternity pledge named Lacey. Steve Lacey? Lacey, Lacey. Victoria, you... No, I don't think I know him, Toddy. Is it an accident? Uh, well, yes, Miss Hall. If you can call being in a state of shock from hazing an accident. How badly is he hurt, Chief? Well, not at all, physically. You see, some of your bird brain students were giving him the works and told him they were going to brand him with a red-hot iron. Naturally, they just blindfolded him and used a chunk of ice on his back. But... Well, but that's horrible. Well, standard formula, Mrs. Hall. But it seems Lacey had been in a bad fire when he was a kid, and his mind just wasn't conditioned for this kind of a gag. Result, shock. I'm shocked, too. Well, you probably come out of it all right, but I thought you ought to know. Yes, of course. Thank you. Well, superficially, it seems like a harmless prank, but, but if some boy with a weak heart... A boy would never admit to having a bad heart. Mm. He'd just say nothing and suffer whatever they gave him. Yes, you're quite right, Vicky. The real danger in hazing lies in its unthinking application to the fit and the unfit. The indignities heaped upon a freshman student are designed to teach him humility towards his theoretical betters and to remove any cocksureness he may have acquired as a high school basketball star. Uh, but in individual cases, hazing can be not only cruel, but actually dangerous. Well, you know the police department's policy on student shenanigans, Doc. We sort of look the other way. If it's just exuberance and the kids pay for any damage. But when somebody gets in real trouble, we get to ask some embarrassing questions. So I thought I'd toss it into your lap. Well, I hope Steve Lacey doesn't have to pay his own hospital expenses. That'll be really adding insult to injury. No, the young intellectuals who put him in there are chipping in for it, Mrs. Hall. He's got the biggest room in the hospital, the prettiest nurse, and the best doctor. Yeah. That's all very thoughtful, but it's a little late. Mm, late indeed. Not only for the boy himself, but if he suffers some permanent mental damage from this idiocy, the, the feeling of guilt among the participants will, or should, last them all their lives. At least they seem to be trying to make up for their mistake. Oh, they're pretty decent kids, really, Miss Hall, but hazing's been going on since the second caveman started school to learn tiger skinny. First caveman probably worked him over with a stone hatchet. These boys expect to get it their first year and dish it out for the next three. It's tradition. I know. What was bad enough for Grandpa is good enough for them. Well, I'm afraid the longevity of the tradition doesn't mitigate its dangers. Murder is also a matter of some antiquity, but... <laughs> He's never qualified as an acceptable social custom. Well, Chief, thank you for coming over. Ah, you're welcome, Doc. I know you have your own mountains to make molehills out of, but this <laughs> seemed to be in your department. Uh, oh, uh, by the way. Yes? You want the names of the hazers? I don't like to rattle the cup on anybody, but it's no particular secret. Oh, you needn't tell me, but I'd appreciate it if you'd ask the leader to call on me. Tonight, if possible. All right. You'll be at the hospital. I'm going right back there anyway. As long as you're going to talk to him, his name is Larry Rogers. Aren't I the old tattletale? <laughs> <laughs> but, Chief, Chief, will you call us from the hospital and tell us how the lazy boy is doing? Yes, ma'am, I will. Well, good night, Doc. Good night. And, uh, look, if you can get rid of hazing in this brain factory of yours, you'll earn the gratitude of the entire Ivy police force. We got enough troubles without fishing fraternity pledges out of the reservoir every year. <laughs> yes, I'll do what I can, Chief. Uh, and if you should detect the order of brimstone in the near future, don't be alarmed for your personal salvation. It'll just be me working like the devil against Hell Week. <laughs> From 
week to week. Yep. As we return to the halls of Ivy, Mrs. Hall is on the telephone getting a report on the student victim of a hazing episode. Yes, Larry. Hmm. And that's an official opinion, isn't it? I mean, it's not just your own diagnosis. Well, I'm glad to hear it, and thank you very much for calling. What? Oh, well, yes. In that case, come in sometime tomorrow. Yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye, Larry. Larry? Larry Rogers, one of the hazing group who put Steve Lacey in the hospital. He was phoning from there. Well, I gather that Lacey is improving. Yes, they say he'll be all right now. Rather glib assurance. A psychic's car of such depth that it can throw a healthy young man into shock is not to be erased by a few sedatives, an alcohol rub, and at night in the hospital. But as I am neither a psychiatrist nor a physician, I shall devote my attention to the cause, not the cure. You mean hazing? I do mean hazing. Mm. Larry Rogers seemed terribly contrite about the whole incident. Oh, he probably is. He has my complete sympathy. He is a more or less innocent victim of a barbarous tribal custom, which I shall do my best to eliminate. Oh, there will be shrieks of protest from the fraternity groups and from the alumni who've lived through their own hazings and claim that it builds character. Oh, I know, I know. But but I, I don't happen to care for character building, which depends on cruelty and hazards to mind and body. This college has been fortunate to date in that it has had no fatalities, not even any serious incidents resulting from Hell Week. Well, let's hope you can get rid of Hell Week before something really tragic happens. What do you think you can do about it? hmm? Ah. Make an appeal to reason or official demand for reform? An ultimatum? Oh, my darling, one of the first executive lessons I ever learned was never issue an ultimatum. Human behavior being so variable and life so full of detours... An irrevocable attitude is equivalent to looking one, locking oneself in a burning barn. <laughs> no, no, I always leave a door at least slightly open, through which to back out of as gracefully as possible. I think I... Door to, through which to back out of. What a construction. Yeah. <laughs> now make it the front door, and then you can see where you're going. <laughs> Any opening will do which permits the passage of shoulders, hips, and a conciliatory frame of mind. But um, I, I think I shall address the student body tomorrow morning. If I can convince the fraternities, they can spread the gospel. As Shakespeare said, "'Tis a Greek invocation to call fools into a circle." <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Ivy, I feel sure that you will be as eager as I am to eliminate the evils which I have pointed out, and which are attendant upon the perpetuation of an intrinsically immature tradition. The conversion of Hell Week, with its primitive indignities, into Help Week, as so successfully carried out by such institutions as Purdue University and others, will prove that the student body of Ivy College has put away its toys, and that we have taken a grown-up attitude toward our fellows and to education itself. Now, may I, uh, uh, may I ask for a show of hands from those who are favorable to this suggestion? Well, thank you. Thank you. The approval appears to be unanimous, and, and I am happy that Hell Week on this campus is now history. Major hazing is ended. And I think we all realize that we will better prepare ourselves for the future by paddling our own canoes instead of each other's behinds. Tardis, I accuse you of being a psychologist. There was no accident that you got the students together while the Steve Lacey business was the hot topic of conversation. Well, if you're suggesting that I purposely channeled their apprehension into constructive action, you're quite right. By the way, wasn't young Rogers supposed to see me today? Yeah, about three. It's uh, 2.45, 2.40. Splendid. Well, that gives me a chance to open the piano and limber up 
a bit on some Bach, Beethoven, and Brown. <laughs> Proving that I have other bees in my bonnet besides the elimination of sacred student traditions. Uh, you may have bees in your bonnet, darling, with some of your ideas of honey. <laughs> i never known you to do anything which wasn't for the good of Ivy. Uh, Ivy has been very good to me. Oh, it may not have the great gray eminence of your Oxford and Cambridge, Oxford. but... Oxford. Oh, Dottie, do you remember when we were there? That beautiful afternoon when the sun was trying desperately to shine for the American visitor. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I doubt if anyone who ever saw those towers and spires could ever forget them. And, of course, to see them for the first time with lovely Victoria Cromwell was to make the memory memorable indeed. <laughs> well, I... How do you defend this dictatorial attitude? How, Dr. Hall? Suggestion to the students that we convert Hell Week into Help Week, uh, I'd like That's to... That's exactly what I am referring to, exactly. By what authority do you, I mean, by what right? Uh, look, teasing and hell week. Uh, pardon the expression, Mrs. Hall. <laughs> you mean hell week? Uh, uh, yes. Well, I didn't even notice, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, thank you. As I was saying, Dr. Hall, to interfere so high-handedly, handedly, I mean, uh, to take it upon yourself, a personal whim to, to Mr. change... Mr. Wellman. Hazing is a mere matter of high spirits, Dr. Hall, undergraduate exuberance. Uh, we can't make panty waste of our students overnight to eliminate what has been the tradition yeah, Mr. of... Mr. Wellman... What is it? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the, the panty waste may be a symbol of timidity, but it is at least a civilized garment, and as such, preferable to, uh, to, a, uh, to a hospital gown which was designed by someone with no sense of human dignity. I don't... I don't quite see... I what... sometimes think that the hospital gown, the most slovenly, ill-fitting, humiliating habiliment known to patient humanity... You do mean patient. I do. Yeah. I sometimes think that this crude and successful attempt to degrade the suffering inmates of what should be a place of mercy and compassion is a deliberate effort on the part of the medical profession to break the spirit and render the victim helpless to protest his other indignities. <laughs> how, how can an ambulatory patient tottering up a hospital corridor with neck strings flying, knees protruding, and spine exposed retain a shred of self-respect? <laughs> Dr. Hall. Hospital gown being made, being made in only two sizes, uh, too large and too small, <laughs> can hardly, hardly be expected uh, to, to... Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Wellman. Uh, you were saying... I was saying that you had no right, no authority to take such an arbitrary action in eliminating a, a tradition as old as hazy. Well, Dr. Hall? Uh, well, yesterday, as a result of Hell Week, we, we narrowly escaped a serious consequence. By an uncomfortably narrow margin, what might have been a national scandal and a personal tragedy became a mere incident. It was too close, Mr. Wellman. Were you ever hazed, Mr. Wellman? Yes, I was, Mrs. Hoyle, most certainly. At a terrible time. Almost killed me. Uh, uh, <laughs> one night they tied me up and threw me at it. But that's beside the point. <laughs> Yes, I was hazed, and I'm proud I bore up under it without acting like a crybaby. Well, it's the smart babies who cry, Mr. Wellman. They tried to tell us when something should be changed. <laughs> I mean when it's sacred traditions, when they are changed. Uh, when, when, when a one-man crusade can overthrow the hallowed customs, which, and I don't care if it is the president who... Mr. Wellman. Yes, Dr. Hall. Uh, no one, I think, will deny that your contributions and your help to Ivy College have been tremendously valuable. As chairman of the Board of Governors, you have been a conscientious guardian of its customs and traditions. Thank you. <laughs> but, as president of Ivy, and considering myself personally responsible for not only the health and well-being of the student body, but also of guiding its energies into useful channels, I could no longer tolerate an activity so fraught with danger to mind and body. 
If you wish to question my decision before the Board of Governors, please, please do so. I have always found them at least as intelligent as the students. <laughs> oh, well, well, thanks, Professor. But that doesn't explain... Uh, do you understand about Help Week, Mr. Wellman? H-E-L-P, that is. Uh, yes, some kind of uh, falderall about painting fences, cleaning up vacant lots, for which we have ample. I mean, if, if the town of Ivy and Ivy College can't maintain its own... If we are out to destroy the fraternity system, why don't we just... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Wellman, but we have taken no step which would hurt the fraternity system. Oh, it has its evils, perhaps, and is often subject to criticism on grounds of being undemocratic. But in converting its more juvenile and sadistic energies to constructive ends, we are taking much of the sting out of such criticism and emphasizing the real values of group effort. Furthermore... Yeah, that's we... Larry Rogers, Oh, William. yes, yes, I suppose. Larry yes. Rogers, that's another thing. He's the son of a fine Ivy alumnus, been very generous with endowments. If we are to embarrass this young man by making him the focal point, the, the, the focal point of this yes. attack... Well, uh, excuse me, Miss uh, with Wellman. Uh, come in, Larry. Ah, oh, it's nice to see you. Hello, Mrs. Hall. Dr. Hall. Hello, Rogers. You know Mr. Wellman, chairman of the board Not of government? Not necessary, Dr. Hall, nor the boy well. Hello, Rogers. Hello, Mr. Wellman. I was just telling Dr. Hall, Rogers, that I felt it necessary to protest his action in eliminating the fine old tradition of heavy. Are and... you kidding? What? I, I mean, are you serious, Mr. Wellman? Of course I'm serious. I take it you think Dr. Hall was right, Larry. Mrs. Hall, it was the smartest thing that's been done around here since they put in electric lights. But leave me, when Steve Lacey went to the hospital, we got the scare of our lives. There were bull sessions all over the campus last night. We know we were acting like grade school kids, and when we realized what might have happened to Steve, and to us, too, well, Dr. Hall took the load off our minds. We all agreed we'd feel better about fixing up a church roof and autographing some guy's plaster cast. Dr. Hall. Yes? I came to apologize for being a leatherhead and to tell you I just entered another school. Another school, Larry? Leaving Ivy? Oh, my goodness, Rogers. Uh, when your father hears you've been forced out of Ivy simply because... I wasn't forced out of Ivy, Mr. Wellman. I've been dishing it out, so now I'm going to try taking it. I'm going into a school where they really have hell week. United States Marine Corps. Well, I... I guess there's nothing much I can say. I... I seem to have been wrong. Again. The only people who never do anything wrong, Mr. Wellman, are the people who never do anything. It's not a very original observation. But it's comforting. Then I... I apologize for bypassing the Board of Governors, Mr. Wellman, but in my judgment, a quick and direct move was necessary while the incident was still fresh in everyone's mind. I think in eliminating hazing, Ivy has taken a long step toward turning out not only men and women, but ladies and gentlemen. In the words of Cardinal Newman, it is almost the definition of a gentleman to say he is one who never inflicts pain. Yes, and uh, in the words of uh, Clarence Wellman, a uh, gentleman should always make as graceful an exit as possible. Good uh, night, Mrs. Hall. Ah, good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Wellman. Yes. Claudie. Yes, my love? Let's go back a bit. Back to the Indian. Uh, the Indians. Oh, yes, yes, certainly. Apaches, Arapahoes, Algonquin. No, 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 no. I mean the one that kept you awake. Indians starting with X. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The, the X. Well, that was a Potawatomi who ran away and joined the Seminoles. Oh, you mean he was a... Uh, yes, darling, he was an X Potawatomi. <laughs> Starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman has been presented by Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. The taste of Schlitz, the taste so many people prefer, has made Schlitz beer first in sales in the USA. Why don't you too enjoy the most popular beer in history? Next time, every time, 
ask for Schlitz beer. And now, here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good night, everyone. Good night. And from our sponsor, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and its thousands of friendly dealers throughout the nation. Good night. Good night. <laughs> next week at this same time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Mr. Wellman is played by Herbert Butterfield. Chief Bentley is John McIntyre, and Larry Rogers was Lee Millar. Tonight's script was written by Gene O'Brien and Don Quinn. Music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Milton Merlin, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who invites you to enjoy on television the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars with Helen Hayes, Margaret Sullivan, Ronald Reagan, and more of the brightest names of Hollywood and Broadway. See your newspaper for time and channel. Ken Carpenter speaking. Oh, we the that us here today. The proceeding was transcribed.